Justice. Good afternoon. My name is Judson Bacot. I'm the author of a book entitled The Evolution of America's Homebred Tears, The Changing Culture. What the subject matter of the book is, the book gives a complete history, a true history, and a complete history of West Side Crips started in 1970 by Stanley Tookie Williams in the city of Los Angeles at St. Andrews Park. I'm an original founding member of West Side Crips, started in 1970. I'm not a newcomer to this game. I helped create the game. And that's what the book is about. It explains explicitly how it has changed or evolved into what it is today. And what it is today, it's a bunch of urban terrorists. Whether or not they realize, these youngsters realize they're using terror tactics to accomplish their ends, but that's what they're using. Fear and intimidation is a tactic used by terrorists. Physical violence, murder, is a to, for control of neighborhoods or control of anything, political platforms, is a form of terrorist tactics. Now, our kids are not the typical terrorists. They're not uh, car bombers. They're not strapping on bombs in their bodies and running in the crowds as of yet and blowing up everybody. No, but they use terror tactics. And as we get into it, I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna explain thoroughly, thoroughly how we change, how we come this far and how we've gotten to where we're at. And by that, I mean Crips. I can't speak specifically on Bloods. I know when they started, I know some, from original bloods, but I do know Cripism on the west side in, in California, because I was there. I was founding member, original founding member, not someone who came lately, but original founding member. Matter of fact, my credentials are such, along with my crime partners, Big Bob the Hawk, Ricardo Bud Sims, James Cuz Cunningham, we were the ones who went to prison for the Blue case. We were the first high profile crip murder. And that happened in 1972 at the Hollywood Palladium in, uh, in Hollywood at the first original Soul Train. What people don't know, realize is we committed that murder on the night of Soul Train. The first one in California, period. Uh, I talk about that in the book. I talk about many subject matters in the book that pertaining to gangs, as related to uh, gangs, Hispanic gangs, black gangs, but most of us talk about black gangs. But we have to mention Hispanic gangs. If you're in California, anywhere on this West Coast, you have to include Spanish gangs into the equation because they're part of the problem too. So it's no denying it, no getting around it. But what we're speaking on right now is Crips. I can't, like I said before, let me re reiterate. I cannot speak on Bloods. I can only speak on things that I know of on Bloods. Anything real intimate, I can't speak on it because I don't know. I wasn't part of their crew. But now at West Side, I can speak on that one thoroughly. I can stand up and thoroughly speak on that one. So, uh, matter of fact, the next, I really didn't do, want to do this, but you know, uh, so many things has happened in my life and a lot of people get at me to do this. And, I, and uh, some of the things I've heard and some of the things I've seen on YouTube, I think it's time for this to come out. And what I mean by this to come out, for the truth to come out, to explain why Crippen started, who started it, where it started, when it started, and where it, hit, it has gone. From 1969 to 2022. Because you have to go back to 69 because that's when the baby cribs first started. And I'm going to give a, history, a little bit of history lesson on that also. I know a little bit about some about that also. About the name change, how we, be, how we become known as Crips, How the color blue came about. How some of the, some of the verbiage, the language came about how Crips have become selective, how we've become, you know, some of our, our, our neighborhoods are in isolation. 
isolationism. Because for why? We want to keep other youngsters out that's not our, our allies, that's our enemies. That somebody look just like me and you, black. Or somebody look just like us, black or brown. Because in California, let's keep it 100, Hispanics live among blacks. And blacks live among Hispanics. So a lot of times you'll see me, you hear me refer to Hispanics and blacks in the same, in the same breath. Because it, it has to be. It has to be the same way with bloods. You're going to hear me talk about bloods a lot. Because bloods and crips are really the main cause of the dysfunction in the murders in, in South Central Los Angeles. It's crips and bloods. Compton, California, which is part of the county of Los Angeles. Crips and bloods. South Central Los Angeles. Crips and bloods. The biggest, some of the biggest crip sets in the world on the east side of Los Angeles and the west side. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about all of them. You know, I have some, some, some folks. I have folks that are bloods. You know, I love them just like I love my folks that are crips. You know, I have folks from Hoover. I have folks from Inglewood family. You know, so uh, I didn't function among them. You know, I have lived among Hoovers. You know, those are 8 Trade Gangster allies, which I'm not a part of 8 Trade Gangster, but I lived in that neighborhood. My brother who just so happened to be a founding, a founder of 8 Trade Gangster Crips. He was one of the founders. And that's the neighborhood I grew up in. And so I know a little bit about something about that, but I won't speak on them because, you know, I'm not a part of them. But I'll speak about them, but I can't specifically say this and that about a trade gangsters or any crip gang. Only crip gang I can say this and that about and be precise is West Side. And the West Side no longer exists. My crip set no longer exists. And so until next time, peace out. One love.